my name is Ryan Kim and welcome back to the 1999 project and after the truly epic week we had last week there had to be a come down and the come down is definitely real now I want to set a precedent in saying that I don't think that these movies that I'm covering this week are bad they're actually pretty good the point I'm trying to get at is that we were here and now we're kind of here it's a definite step down in quality but I did enjoy both movies for what they were. I only have two to cover this week, so let's get cracking. Starting off with the Frank Oz joint, Bowfinger. You're gonna be a star. Bowfinger was directed by the voice of Yoda, and it starred Steve Martin, Eddie Murphy, and Christine Baranski, among others. It tells the story of a man named Bowfinger, played by Martin. He is a B-movie director who is running a studio pretty much on the budget of two ham sandwiches and the rent is due he needs a hail mary and so he comes up with the idea of hiring the biggest act the biggest movie star in this movie kit marshall played by eddie murphy however marshall soundly rejects bowfinger's idea but bowfinger is not one to give up so he essentially hires he he hires someone who looks suspiciously like Kit Ramsey named Jeff. No, not the peanut butter. This guy named Jeff, coincidentally also played by Eddie Murphy, and so the movie shoot is on. This is the second Steve Martin movie that I've covered in the Ninety Nine Project. The other one was The Out of Towners. A very bizarre comedy that ultimately grew on me. I liked it. And this movie is not as crazy as The Out of Towners, but it definitely it definitely got a good chuckle out of me a time or two. This movie's strength really gets going where it leans into the silliness of the premise. Steve Martin is predictably very good as Bowfinger, the conniving producer who will get his movie made no matter what. But Eddie Murphy is just as good in the movie. He has to play two roles, essentially. Kit Ramsey, who is your stereotypical, egotistical action movie star. Like, if you picture a very egotistical movie star like someone Vinny Chase would know from the show Entourage, Kit Ramsey would probably be your guy. But then Eddie Murphy also has to play Jif. The complete opposite of that in almost every way imaginable and eddie murphy i mean it's eddie murphy so of course he's going to pull it off and he does bowfinger if he were played by any other actor or if he were in any other movie would potentially be grating or annoying but steve barton has the tendency to make characters like this very likable and bowfinger is genuinely comes across as a likable guy probably wouldn't want to meet him in real life or have him owe you money or vice versa. But the movie does a good job of showing that Bowfinger's heart is in the right place and he just wants to, he wants to make movies. That's all he wants to do. But the one thing that I can say in this movie is that it is enjoyable. I am going to give this a good rating. It's not perfect. It's definitely predictable in places, but it's likable enough in its in its parts where it just leans into the strengths that it does really well. It also has the benefit of star of starring in a bit role of very, very young Robert Downey Jr. Like, seriously, when I saw him in this movie, my jaw dropped to the ground. And I'm like, whoa, Robert Downey Jr., what are you doing in a movie like this? But let's close things out by taking a look at basically a big old advertisement for Kiss, the band. It's Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock City was directed by Adam Rifkin, and it starred Edward Furlong. Not my mother, Todd. Yes, that one. Lynn Shay and all of the members of KISS in a brief roles, though they're mentioned quite a bit. It tells the story of four friends who are trying desperately to get to see a KISS concert at Cobo Hall in Detroit. However, the year is 1978, KISS is at the height of their popularity, but 
one of the friends' mother is deeply deeply religious and does not want her son having anything to do with anything Kiss-related. The mom is played hilariously by Lin Shay. This movie was a lot of fun. I've seen a lot of comparisons of this movie to the movie Airheads, severely underrated movie starring Adam Sandler, watch it if you haven't, and also Dazed and Confused, the Richard Linklater film. And I feel like a lot of the DNA was taken from both of these movies and put into Detroit Rock City. There is a lot of the we love the 70s energy in the form in this movie kind of borrowed a little liberally from Dazed and Confused, but also given the given the idea of these three friends have a kiss themed cover band called Mystery and they're desperately trying to see Kiss. It kind of borrows a little bit from Airheads there. This feels very much like a late 70s or a late 90s movie trying to portray what the late 70s was, but in a weird sort of way I kind of liked it. I liked I liked the the look of it. I loved the nostalgia of it. There's a lot of stuff in it that is very over the top. I think that was done on purpose. It gets a little grating at times, but overall, I, I liked the vibes. Lynn Shay, hilariously of the Insidious franchise, where she banishes demons, plays one of the boys' moms who is deeply religious, like almost to a cartoonish degree. Like, not quite Carrie's mom from Carrie, but definitely close. <laughs> and it is just hilarious the lengths that that she will go to stop her son from listening to Kiss of all bands. Keeping in mind that Alice Cooper was also a thing in this time and had just bitten the head off of a chicken just a couple of years before this. Like I said, this movie thrives off of the vibes, for lack of a better example. The story is ridiculous, and it would make no sense in today's context, but I'm not necessarily asking for it to be. The movie knows exactly what it is, it's a silly premise, and the movie knows it and just leans into the fact that it is silly and is trying to be fun. And I think the movie succeeds for a large part. I am going to give this a good rating. If you're a super fan of Kiss, I believe you will like this more than me. Kiss is in a lot of my running playlist. I was made for loving you as a banger, what do you want from me? But I think this movie is a little less for me, but for others, I see others really digging this one. Well, what did you think of any of the movies I've talked about this week? Let me know in the comments. I would love to read what you have to say. My name is Ryan Cam, and I'll see you in the next one.